before it says something on the other end. Let's get the, I just want you to hit the key so they'll know what the key is. And I don't want nothing but voices. I want you to declare this today. Because no matter what you may be going through in your life, God's been good to you. Amen. God's been good to you. He's been faithful. Amen. And then, I, I mean, just, I, I've got a load that I've got to get through this morning and sermon, but, but I'm not going to preempt what God is speaking right here. I'm going to tell you something God told me standing right there because there's somebody in this sanctuary or there's somebody watching by a Facebook or YouTube that's going to need to hear this because God spoke something to me that you need to hear and I'm going to release it and then we're going to let God do what He does. Either we're going to go for this sermon or we're going to do whatever He wants to do. But what we're going to preface the word with that God's about to speak is that we're going to preface it with worship and a declaration. So for you standing here in the sanctuary and those that are watching us via Facebook or YouTube, what I want you to do right where you are is I want you to sing this chorus with us. It's a very familiar chorus. I want you just to sing it as a declaration. Not that, not that you need to remind anybody else or even remind God, but you need to remind yourself sometimes that God has been good to me. That God's been faithful. When men left me, God was faithful. When my God was faithful. When my mind started getting weak, God was faithful. When everything else turned on me, God was faithful. So I want us to sing that chorus. I just want voices, but I want to hear your voice. Don't stand and listen to them sing. They're declaring it for themselves. I need you to declare it for yourself. Say again, are you ready? sanctuary, this pew, the Lord spoke something into my spirit that he's been faithful to you. That there's somebody right now today, it's probably multiple somebodies, but I know there's somebody today, either in this house, online, or both, that you've gone through hell, and this is what the Lord said, that you've gone through hell in the last week or so. That it's been difficult for you. 
That at times you felt like hell was going to overcome you. That at times you felt like you didn't know how you was going to make it. That you didn't know if you was going to see the sun rise on the next day. I feel the Holy Spirit right here. But God wants me to tell you that the reason why hell didn't overcome you. The reason why the circumstance hasn't killed you. The reason why you're still breathing, you're still living, you're still fighting, you're still struggling is because he's been faithful. Yes, and our suffering will blind us to the faithfulness of God because all we see is the pain in our suffering. Come on now. But what you need to see this morning is that in your suffering, that in your trial, that God has been faithful yes. to you. Amen. God has been faithful to you. I want to testify two things to you. I plan on doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I got my thought. For the last three weeks, I have gone through, literally, through hell with my health. With sinus infections and vertigo and all kind of just mess. I have not felt myself in three weeks. I have, and I told my wife, I said, this is an attack of the enemy on my life. Come on. It is. But God has been faithful to me. God has been faithful to me. Last Sunday morning, I stood right here in this pew, and I prayed these words to God. I said, God, if you don't do something, I'm not going to be able to do this today. Because I'm telling you, my head, this is probably more times than not, but my head was a mess. And I couldn't have a coherent thought. I couldn't stay focused. I couldn't get it together. And I said, Lord, if you do not move right now, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. And as I stood there and those words left my lips and we prayed and I came up and I did the prelims and I still wasn't feeling good and I still didn't have it together and I walked right back down and I said, Lord, this is it. <laughs> I said, I need a touch of your hand. And I'm going to tell you, about 15 seconds before I walked that pulpit, it shifted. Praise God. Amen. I got clarity. I got stability. I got focus. You know why? And I'm telling you, Pastor, why are you telling me that? Because I want you to know God is faithful. Listen, it may not come to the last second, but his faithfulness will always carry you and cover you. You may feel like you're at the end of your road and that you don't have a hope left in the world, but I want you to hold on and keep praying. I want you to keep trusting. And I want you to keep believing because the same God that was faithful to you in the past is the same God. We get 
He's so caught up sometimes, Sister Weeks, in our own misery. And it's understandable sometimes because we go through, that's, people, that's a lot of people going through a lot worse than I've ever gone through. And we've been talking about Job for the last, I don't know, seems like six years on Wednesday night. But God was faithful to Job through all of that. Amen. See, we think faithfulness equates to, to uh, immunity. We think faithfulness of God means I don't have to go through no stuff. Means I don't have to suffer. It means I don't have to be sick. It means I don't have to be in pain. It means I don't have to lose anything. It doesn't mean there's never a setback in my life. Faithfulness to us sometimes is that God is going to just pop me right out of my situation. I ain't going to have to suffer. I'm not going to have pain. You will never understand the faithfulness of God until you understand it in your suffering. Come on. Because if all God did was move things out of your way, if all God did was keep you from that sickness or keep you from that suffering or keep you from that pain, you would not understand the depth and the gravity of His faithfulness. But God said, while you're in the midst of the storms of your life, He said, I'm faithful. I'm not just faithful to you when you're well. He said, I'm faithful to you when you're sick. I'm not just faithful to you when you're blessed. I'm faithful to you when you feel like you can't find a blessing anywhere. God said, I'm faithful. Faithful. God said, I'm faithful to my word. How many of you got a word from God that you haven't seen fulfilled in your life yet? Is there anybody, if you, if you ain't got a word from God, I, I got to shift how I'm preaching. Because God ought to be speaking to you. God ought to be speaking to your life. If, if you're praying, oh Lord, I'm going to have to preach long enough. If you're praying, if you're studying, if you're fasting, and you're in this word, God is speaking to you. God has a purpose for your life. God has a word over your life. And God is faithful. He will be faithful to that word, Daddy. When he says I'll do it, he'll do it. Go ahead and take it to the bank, mortgage the house on it, do whatever you got to do with it. Because God said if I spoke it, I will bring it to pass. Because not only am I faithful to you, I am faithful over my word for you. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. 20 years ago, I stood, when I stood, I sat. In a car I was driving, in a truck, I was actually at work. Driving a truck. Sitting in the cab of that truck. I can tell you where I was at. I was at 85 on Malden Road in Brewer. I was getting on 85 off of Malden and uh, off of Malden Road right there. And the Lord spoke something to me, Sister Weeks, that was so crazy. It was so crazy. It was something I, I'm just out of the blue. And the Lord spoke a number to me. And I said, well, I said, Lord, that is wow. I said, God, let it be so. That you spoke it, let it be so. I stood at an altar. I was the youth pastor of Malden Church of God. I stood at an altar, and there was an evangelist. I brought a guy in to preach a youth revival. And I stood there, and he, he called me over there, and he said, Pastor, he said, I want to pray for you. And as he began to pray, he looked at me, and he said, you and God have discussed the moment. I said, mm hmm, sure did. He don't know what it was. Nobody to this day probably knows what it was being God. He said, but you and God have discussed the number, and God wants you to know that I'm starting to birth you. And I'm starting to press you out and to birth you. Now, here I stand 20 years later. I have not seen that word come to pass in my life yet. I've not seen that number. That God said I would minister to him and reach in a setting or in a group of settings for future. But sitting in this sanctuary the other day as I prayed, God dropped that same number back into my mind. Praise God. He reminded me 20 years later of what he said to me then because God was reminding me that I'm faithful to it. Yeah. That when I spoke it over you, I'm going to do it in you or through you. If God's got to move hell out the way to get to you, God will move hell out of the way. If God's got to move people out of the way, God will move people out of the way. If God's got to turn it upside down, flip it over, throw it, God will do whatever He has to do to see His word for you fulfilled because God wants you to know that I'm faithful over my word. Amen. Amen. 
reminded me of that. Because the world I was in and the situation I was going through with my health, and I'm getting somewhere, don't, 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 don't check out on me. God wanted me to know, sister, which he wasn't done yet. Praise God. He wasn't done yet. Because I'll be honest with you, that's my wife. There were some days there I just laid down and went on to see Jesus. Because I couldn't function. I couldn't hardly hold my head up. This seemed to be getting no better. Medication wasn't working. Or at least it didn't feel like it was. And there's some days I could have just cashed it in and I could have laid it down. I could have went on to be with Jesus and I'd have been happy. But God spoke that to me because He wanted to remind me He wasn't done with me yet. Praise God. God spoke to me two weeks ago, three weeks ago, before all this, or right as all this was starting, actually. In our house, God made a statement to me. Now, y'all know, those that have been here know that I have a heart and a love for Mexico. I love it. Been there three times, ministered, preached in Mexico. See, I mean, it's, it's, it's unreal to see the difference in church there and church here. The hunger there is it's just off the charts. I mean, we preached and 30, 40 people rushed to the altar to give their hearts to Jesus. I mean, it's hard to get 30 people in a year to give their hearts to Jesus in a church in America. And this is at one service. I mean, they literally clamor and stack on top of each other trying to get as close as they can to the altar to give their hearts to Christ. And it created such a passion in me for the, for the land of Mexico. And I have prayed because, just to be honest with you, I went the October or the uh, March that I came to be the pastor here a little over a year ago. I already had a trip planned. I went, but I've lost... We've lost that connection that we've had in Mexico. And so I don't know how I'm going to get to Mexico. And I told my wife, I said, I've got to find a way. I've got to get back. I said, God has, God has spoken something, put something in my heart for them. I said, I know, I know that i got to get there. Two, three weeks ago, God said to me out of the blue, He said, I'm not done with you in Mexico. Praise God. I pray, God, send me back. God, open the door for me to go. I don't want to go. And God reminded me, Sister Weeks, I'm not done with you in Mexico. A week ago, sitting in my office, just in a time of prayer and praise to the Lord, the Lord stepped into my office and He reminded me yet again. He said, I'm not done with you in Mexico. He said, I have a harvest there for you to reach and I'm not finished yet. I'm telling you all that to let you know this. God's not done with you. It's not over. I know the world's in chaos. And I know it seems like hell's winning, Sister Weeks. It seems like hell has the upper hand. It seems like evil is going to win the day. But here's what I want you to know. God's not done yet. Amen. God has not said the final word yet. God has not withdrawn himself from humanity. God has not taken his hand off of the nations. God is still moving and God is still working. God is still faithful to his word. What I want you to hear, what I want you to know, is that whatever that word is that God has given you, he's faithful over it. I don't care how big or how small it may seem to you, God is faithful over that word. And God will bring that thing to pass in your life because of his faithfulness. Amen. Last week, my wife and I make our six month pilgrimage to Charleston every six months for follow ups. It is a pilgrimage, especially for Hodges. I mean, it's like a two, feels like a two day journey. <laughs> and you do it all in one day, it's six hours round, six and a half hours round trip driving. We make our pilgrimages we have for the last three years or so. Three years ago, last week, was Candy's last chemo treatment. For y'all that don't know, she's had cancer twice. But God was faithful both times. Praise God. I told this before, but I'm going to tell it again because there's somebody that needs to hear this because it, it, it speaks directly to God's faithfulness. <clears throat> I stood in our kitchen, in our house in Florence, South Carolina, and the devil stood right in front of me, Sister Miller, just as I was standing in front of you, and he said, she will die. 
He said, she will die. She will not recover. And I went to the church the next day. And I was in that sanctuary and I was praying. And I was interceding before God over what the enemy had spoke to me. And God spoke this so clear it rang in my soul to this day. He said, listen to me. He said, he is my servant. you got to remember that. The enemy is submitted to God. He can do nothing God doesn't allow him to do. He said, he's my servant. He said, you don't need to argue with another servant. He said, when he comes to you, speaking lies and death and destruction, he said, you tell him you got a word from the king. Amen. God said she should live. Yes. God told her directly, he said, it is my will to heal you. Yeah. You will live. The enemy says she's going to die. God says she's going to live. Who right. won? Who was right? God was faithful over his word. God was faithful over his word. We go to Charleston this week. Three years past chemo. I don't know how many visits we've had. 27,000. It's probably, I mean, this, my checkbook says it's at least that many. They proud, they're proud of their services now. But we go, we get a clean report. Doctor says everything looks good, everything's great. See you in Praise God. four months this time because of some, to get things back in line with their, with their schedule. But God has been faithful to us. We've been through hell. I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, if you want me to tell you that it's always been easy, that we never had to suffer, that God just showed up at the beginning and, and we never had to fight, now I can't lie to you. We've been through hell. We fought some devils. We fought ourselves. We fought our worries. We fought our humanity and our frailty. But in all of that, what I want you to know is God's been faithful. Praise God. God's been faithful. She stands here today, cancer free. Three years. She's checking every visit on that calendar off. Is it five years? She's going to have to go every six months. She is waiting for it. But God's been faithful. Now, I know this ain't what I had planned this morning. But this is what the Lord had planned this morning. Praise God. I can get to my sermon next week. The same God that, 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 that gave me this probably three weeks ago when I wrote it is the same God that I'm knowing next week to preach it to you. But God, I want to interrupt this time this morning because there's somebody or multiple somebodies that needs to be reminded that God is faithful. Amen. That the enemy is not going to overtake you. That the enemy is not going to overcome you. That God has been faithful to you. And if you will remain faithful to Him, God will see you through. Is there anybody in this house today? I need some people. I need some people that can, with just a show of hand, you're not saying that. Just slide your head up that God's been faithful to you. That God's probably in the hands going up all over this place. Yeah. My God, look at that. How many of y'all once, how many of y'all in this place have had cancer that God's delivered you? One, two, three, four, five, seven, six. At least six hands have gone up in this house. How many of you have had have lost tragically a partner, a husband, a wife, a child in this house? Yet here you are. <laughs> Yet here you are. You know why, Sister Louise? Because he's been faithful. Amen. Amen. Doesn't mean it didn't hurt. Doesn't mean it don't still hurt. But he's been faithful. When you didn't feel like you could get up and take another step, God said, I'm going to carry you the next one. Praise God. When you didn't feel like you had enough energy to put that first, that next foot in front of the front foot, God says, come on, we can do this together. Yeah. We can do this together. And here's what I want you to know this morning. That God has been faithful to you. And God will continue to be faithful to you. So whoever you are in this house, or whoever you are out in the world, God wants you to know this morning that His faithfulness has not diminished over your life. Right. 
God. That He has not withdrawn His hand over you. That He is still for you and is still fighting for you. <clears throat> Those of you who have been with us on Wednesday night, you know what we talked about with Job and what Job has gone through. But in all of that, you know who was still right there? God was. Amen. God never left Job. Yes. God never left him. God said, no, my faithfulness stays. See, faithfulness of men can be determined by what you can give to men. By what you can do for people. But God said, that's not how my faithfulness works. God said, we're down to the end. He said, I'll stick with you closer than a brother. Amen. Go with you all the way, even until the end. The faithfulness of God is with you. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I don't even know what time is it. 11.53, somebody was watching that watch for me. <laughs> I want y'all to come back. I want y'all to sing. I want you to worship, but if, 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 if you are going through something in your life that you need, you don't need, you don't need somebody's hand on you. You just need to rem be reminded of the faithfulness of God. I want you to speak that to yourself. God is faithful. God's been faithful. And as they sing this song, the goodness of God, I want you to just shut everything else out of your life. And just you and God, I just want you to remind God how faithful He's been to you. And that you haven't let it, it hasn't gone by. You haven't forgotten that the enormity of your suffering hasn't drowned out the faithfulness of God. And I want you to make a declaration of God. That God, I'm going to be faithful to you because you've been faithful to me. He'll never leave you. He'll never let you stand up by yourself. He'll never go through anything that the Lord won't go through with you. God wants you to know He's been faithful to you in the past. And He'll be faithful to your present and to your future. Amen. Amen. Stand with us and let's worship the Lord this morning.
everybody else before we quit. Because I'll, I'll preach all day if we don't do something. Go ahead. I'm going through something physical, but he's faithful. He is. He is. I'm going to read you a scripture. Numbers 23 and 13, or 23 and 19. God is not man that he should lie. Or a son of man that he should change his mind. Come on. God ain't changed his mind about you. Amen. Has he said? Has he spoken? And will he not do it? That's right. Or has he spoken? Will he not fulfill it? Amen. The Lord wants you to remember that if I said it, I'll do it. Amen. That his word has the authority and the power yeah. to perform it in you, yeah. to do it through you. That it'll bust down every mountain hill puts in front of you. That it'll overcome every obstacle that the enemy tries to snare you with. Yeah. God said, if I spoke it, I'll do it. Just remember, I'm faithful. Yeah. I'm faithful. Have I not been faithful to you in your past, says the Lord? Have I not proved myself to you already, says God? Why then would I not be faithful to you today? Why then would I allow the enemy to overtake you today, says the Lord? My faithfulness knows no end. There is no limitation to how faithful I will be to you, says the Lord. I have spoken it to you, and yea, I will perform it among you, says the Lord. For I am faithful to my word, and I am faithful to you, says the Lord of hosts. Faith. He's faithful, church. He's faithful, church. He's faithful. Lift your hands right where you are. And just call out to God. Say, God, you're faithful. He's faithful. Lord, you're faithful. Father, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. You've been so faithful. Cry, church, just declare it. God, you've been so faithful. Ladies, God, you've been so faithful. Cry out, say it. God, you've been so faithful. You've been so faithful. You've been so faithful. So faithful. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you today. Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of God. Father, we thank you that in our times of trial, you're faithful. That in times of plenty, you're faithful. And in times of lack, you're faithful. That in times of sickness, you're faithful. And in times of worry, you're faithful. That in times, Lord, when it seems like life and our situations are going to overcome us and overtake us. But God, your faithfulness is a shield about us today. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness today. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us today and that you have taken this time to so lovingly and wonderfully remind us that you are faithful and that you will do exactly what you said you would do. Lord, I ask you to go with my people as they leave this house today. Let them leave in the memories of your faithfulness. Let the memories of the faithfulness of God flood their hearts and minds today. Let the memories of the faithfulness of God just barrage them today, Lord. Let them be overwhelmed by the memories of all the times that you have shown yourself and proved yourself faithful in their lives. And God, let that encourage them to be faithful to you and encourage them.
that you will be faithful in the things and in the days that are ahead of us all. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray that you would surround this body of believers with your glory and goodness. Use us for your desire. Use us for your truth. Use us for what you desire us to do and be. And we give you praise and glory for it all. In Christ's name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 I want you to know this as you may remember this today and through the days ahead of your life. Just remember that God has been faithful. Amen. And that He will continue to be so. Amen. 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 Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise that you go in the peace, the goodness, and the strength of the Lord God Almighty?